Shahnameh Stories, Part 3 The Story of Tahmores the Divbinder Tahmores Divband Having killed the son of Ahriman, Hushang became king after the death of his grandfather and ruled justly and wisely for 40 years. He civilized the world by introducing many arts and most valuable of all was his discovery of fire, which he celebrated with worship and the founding of the Feast of Sadeh. He was succeeded by his son Tahmures, who preserved and built upon his father's works, adding skills to better the lives of his people. However, even though the black div had been killed, Ahriman and his demons continued to plague mankind. So Tahmores vowed to cleanse the world of the devil's malevolence and to restore good over evil. Tahmores had a wise vizier who advised him that the only way to defeat Ahriman was by the use of magic. And so the king not only bound Ahriman with spells and made him his slave, but humiliated him by saddling him up and riding around the world on his back like a horse. When the demons saw their leader degraded like that, they rebelled. Joined by a horde of sorcerers, the devil's army attacked amidst a cloud of smoke and vapor and battle cries that ascended to the heavens. But once again, the king used magic. Conjuring up ancient spells, he subdued two-thirds of them and defeated the rest by the force of his mace and became known as the Deev Binder. He dragged them, chained and wounded in the dust, pleading for their lives. Don't kill us, they begged, and in return we will teach you valuable skills as yet unknown. So the king spared them on the condition that they reveal their secrets to him. And once freed from their chains, they had no choice but to obey. They taught Tahmur Shah the mysterious art of writing, showing him how the letters were formed and pronounced, knowledge that made his heart glow. What is more, they didn't just teach him one script, but almost 30, including the Latin, Arabic and Persian scripts, as well as the Sordian, Chinese and Pahlavi, the language of the Persian Empire. There are approximately 30 known paintings of this story, and the four that we are going to look at happen to be by the supreme artists of their time. Each is dramatically different and represents not only exceptional work of their respective Shahnamehs, but the exquisite taste and style of the Kitab Khane, or artistic workshops of three Safavid Shahs, Shah Tahmasp, his ruthless son Ismail II, and his grandson, Shah Abbas the Great. The illustrations portray a battle scene on a rocky landscape in which Tahmures Shah and his forces defeat the rebellious Deves. There are no known depictions of Tahmures riding around on Ahriman's back, or indeed of Ahriman at all, and most are of the final act of the insurrection where, as narrated by Ferdowsi, the Deves are tired and bound. Chaste or Baste in Persian, and Tahmures delivers a mortal blow to their leader, while his forces scatter the others. This painting is from that superlative among all extant Shahnames, the sublime Shahnameh of Shah Tahmasp and bears comparison to the painting of Hushang killing the Black Div in the previous video. Also attributed to Sultan Muhammad, it depicts another array of Divs in an equally action-packed drama. However, true to his sensibility and skill in evoking atmosphere, here 
in accordance with the narrative, the mood of the Deves has changed. The former feisty and cheeky rogues have been soundly beaten, their confidence crushed and their insubordination suppressed. The contrast shows the masterful range of Sultan Muhammad's genius. As a kinder eye elicits sympathy for the Deeves' reversal of fortune while continuing to poke fun at them. Against a soft pale blue landscape framed by outcrops of undulating rocks suffused with spuming spirits, Tahmures the Deev binder brings the demons under his control by the force of his mace. Following the action anti-clockwise, in the lower right, a horse followed by the roped pink div leads the eye from the right up and around to the left. Its rider leans forward to chat with a companion as an inquisitive tree perches on the shoulders of the surging rock in between them to posit an opinion as well. Dressed in exquisite silk and velvet embroidered in gold, the regal purple of Tahmures's clothing is picked up in the swirls of clouds, the flowers, his saddle pad, and even the tunic of the beige div recoiling as the black div in front of him is clobbered on the head. Looking on in distress as they debate amongst themselves, the splendidly attired horsemen are as individualized as the expressions and exclamations of the horses. At the top right, the pastel rock spirits close in to listen to the complicit whispers of the black and white horses as wisps of clouds also spiral down to eavesdrop. At the center of the painting, Tahmures's ox-headed mace crashes down upon the black thief's head, undeterred by the awkwardly lifted left arm and painfully twisted hand trying to lessen the blow. Notwithstanding the failure to scare off the attacker, his snake tail, harnessing the last of the thief's former ferocity, limbers up, turns back and delivers a pestilential tongue lashing from in between the lunging legs, albeit leaping away in fright, their momentum indicated by the swing of the leopard skin tunic with its elegant lining. Blood splatters as the wallop macerates the deep's skull. Dazed, his jaw drops as both he and Tahmures's horse gawk at the sound of the crunching cranium. The force and depth of the blow and the pool of gushing blood and brains are personified by the bolt upright red flowers spurting out of the deep cleft in the rocks that have split open above them. Behind him, all whiskers and brows, the beige div's eyes bulge in gaping horror, his crooked fangs poking out of the bristly bush posing as a beard and moustache. His contrasting hand gestures warding off the imminent attack and trampling coming his way display his fear while the extent of his terror is communicated by the flailing frenzy of the bramble branches scrambling out of the molten rocks above and behind him. The roundup of the deeds suggested in the narrative verse continues below left in the elephantine and odd-looking spectator deeds who've come to life from the effervescent rocks to point out and cackle contentedly at the sagging spotted pink div being led away in disgrace. In front of them, the full frontal pink div stares out blankly at the viewer. Absorbed in a zen-like trance, his delicate hands hug his knees in calm composure, poised for no less than the miracle of occultation. In the centre, a white div crouches in contorted child's pose. 
His bones and muscles have been etched out under the translucent down-covered skin that is offset against the soft fur of his two-toned doe-skin tunic. A poignant study of abject gloom, his brooding face and smouldering half-closed, heavy-lidded eyes bring the verse to life. Yet, even from the depth of the abyss, comes the div's wicked humour as his long left forefinger walks itself out from the elegant hand for a jab at the baffled pink div's humiliation crowned by the cheeky monkey's furtive tug on his tail. This painting by the later Safavid artist Murad de Lamy is one of the 55 known dispersed folios of the unfinished Shahnameh of Shah Ismail II that was last seen intact at an exhibition at the Musée des Arts Décoratifs in Paris in 1912. Taken out of the Royal Library in Tehran, it had, like the great Mongol Shahnameh, fallen into the hands of the unscrupulous Belgian art dealer Georges de Motte who is infamous for dismembering manuscripts, cutting down the pages, mounting the paintings, and selling them individually. Known for his short and turbulent rule that ended in his murder, Ismail II came to the throne in 1576, upon the death of his father, Shah Tahmasp. He had spent the previous two decades imprisoned by his father, who had feared the possibility of a rebellion led by his son. The years of imprisonment had deeply affected Ismail, the most famous inmate of Qahqahe Castle, a jail that was used for political opponents during the Safavid dynasty. Built in the mountains of Ardebil, it was a place of horror like its contemporary, the Chateau d'If in France, rendering its name, which means howling, a cruel play on the word that is associated with loud laughter. The irony was not lost on the prince, whose poetry, while a prisoner there, summed up the change in his life from one of laughter to one of weeping. That qahqahe resulted in this qahqahe, he wrote wistfully. Upon his accession, Ismail's paranoia and disturbed mind led to a ruthless and bloody campaign against any possible threat to his position as Shah, resulting in the murder or blinding of five of his own brothers and other Safavid princes. Yet despite his violent 15-month rule, Shah Ismail II was a highly cultured individual who, by bringing together many of the foremost masters of his father's reign, had hoped to rebuild the famous atelier of Shah Tahmasp's early years. Here, upon a gold landscape dotted with a few flowers poking out startled heads of white and blue, and backdrop by a sheer sheet of turquoise resembling a waterfall, Tahmures, mounted on a blue dappled horse, battles a spirited swarm of eight demons. Charging at each other from either side, the soldiers on the right and the demons on the left encircle the triumphant Tahmures as he gallops back towards his soldiers, dragging a frightened black div. In a balance of text and illustration, the landscape is divided by mauve and purple-tinted rocks that mesh with the gold to rise into a tall fountain of turquoise, blue and pale pink boulders. Trees grow from the crest of the coralline rocks and a smaller one extends into the margin where corrections to the text are noted in a different hand. The four columns of text descend into the fray, steadying the fury of the battle that breaks out of its boundaries.
The multicolored divs share similar features, such as shaggy bodily hair and curl clusters that sprout at their knobbly elbows. Their Yoda-like ears fan out on either side of elaborate horn outcrops, framing the large animated eyes and long eyelashes that look like they've been adorned with eyeliner and mascara. Their muscular bodies are wreathed with bands of gold encrusted with rubies and bands of silver now oxidized into black. A masterpiece of action, color, character and energy, the scene pulsates with excitement and tension created by the varied poses and gestures of the divs. Reading the painting from right to left, the pink div turns back and chortles at his pursuer. Quite unconcerned at his arm being sliced off, he bats his heavily curled eyelashes at the earnest young soldier and mocks him with his flapping ears. His blue tunic overlaid with a yellow apron picks up the circle of colours in the figures and horse around him. On the left, a cluster of five divs take a variety of defensive postures. Most vicious of all is the millstone-wielding, emerald-eyed and golden-lashed orange div who lurches forward menacingly, the force of his thrust indicated by his flared ears. His angry growl is a humorous contrast to the dopey black div next to him and the dainty brown div on the left edge of the frame who lowers its effeminate eyelashes to glance seductively at the viewer as its chubby unclawed hands reach out delicately to coax a rock from the colorful outcrop by pinching its cheek. At the center, Tahmure Sediv band has bound the leader and most ferocious of the divs, whose bulging eyes glare beneath the fiery flaming eyelids and high horns. Grappling to liberate himself of the thin white cord around his neck, the strain of the pull is intensified by his attempt to resist capture by latching a foothold onto the outside frame of the painting while the two bluebells beneath him extend out of the pink rock as if to measure the sprawl of his lumpy limbs. In the foreground, a wounded green div struggles to crawl away. The tenuous stretch is felt in the pull of his left leg and the weight on the left arm and elbow as he drags himself under the shot of the arrow in his back. His reach into the text to pluck out the letters references the Deeves' erudite knowledge of the many scripts that they will teach Tahmures in return for sparing their lives. Similarly, at the top right, the brown div under the scripted banners alludes to the Deeves as discerning scholars of the noble art of writing, as he takes issue with the horse who has poked his head into the text for an unlettered nibble. In the next video, we will continue the story of Tahmures the Divbinder with two paintings that bring with them a different city, a different era, and the patronage of one of the greatest rulers of Iran, the fifth Safavid Shah Abbas the Great and his glorious city of Isfahan. Mm -hmm.